to get a, si- a sense of, of, of the size or the scope of the Pentagon budget, just put it into context for us as to um, just how big the Pentagon budget is relative, I don't know, I guess, to our entire budget. Well, you know, there are different ways of counting the Pentagon budget. We used the number that is the the seven hundred and sixteen billion, which is the um, appropriated amount for the Pentagon budget, plus you know what they started in the Bush administration, the additional funds for uh, ongoing wars. They separated those out because they want to keep the budget seeming small. So it's it's uh, it's like a contingency budget, but you know you're going to spend it. So uh, so it brings it from about six hundred and eighty something billion to um, seven hundred and sixteen billion. It's actually a lot larger because you add in things like uh, homeland security, veterans. Uh, benefits, which are the result of wars, the um, the uh, amount of interest on war debt, which is most of our debt, and uh, you know we fund our wars uh, with borrowing because they don't want to have people face the, the true costs of wars. So you know, if you add all of those things together that are that are military or national security related, including the intelligence agencies, you come up with more like one point three five trillion dollars a year. So uh, we have a um, uh, an entity that um, spends one point three five trillion dollars a year, more or less. Um, you know, and we could quibble over uh, several hundred billion dollars, I guess, but um, we don't have to, right? Because this is all money that is accounted for. Of course, uh, it is our uh, biggest expenditure um, that is, um, at the very least, not self financing. Um, what? Um, what are the, uh, I mean, what are the auditing well, you know, uh, procedures? You know, another way that people might relate to this is that the total collections for uh, income tax and corporate taxes in the in the year this year is one point three trillion dollars. So, if you're talking about the pay as you go, uh, that entire all the taxes collected by the United States. Um, for income and corporate taxes, pay for military. <laughs> There's nothing else left. Okay, so all right, let's get to the uh, to the to the nub of this, though. Um, we've got um, th- when you have this amount of money, you would imagine the controls on this money and the ability for those who are spending it and those who are um, uh, allocating it to know where it's going. You would imagine it's pretty um, uh, intense and there's a lot of scrutiny, but that's not been the case at all, has it? No, in fact, it's completely the reverse of what you'd expect. The Pentagon has for, you know, this guy, Undersecretary Shanahan, uh, when he announced that the Pentagon had failed its first ever audit uh, uh, by outside auditors, uh, which they did uh, last week, um, he said, but you should, you know, we should be uh, given credit for having uh, gone through the audit. But what he didn't say is that for since... uh, in 1990, the Pentagon has been stonewalling the, a congressional order in this, in what was called the uh, the um, CFO Act that required every federal agency of the United States government to create auditable uh, accounts that could be audited by outside auditors every year. And every agency of government has come into compliance except for the Pentagon, which has steadfastly refused to do it. And only now, you know, this this first year, uh, Congress finally lost patience and just didn't demanded it. And they, they allocated $900 million to do this audit by big outside auditing firms. And uh, predictably, as, as I was told by the uh, head uh, monitoring that for the GAO, uh, before the audits were in, he said they're not going to be able to do it. They're, they won't be able to do it for years. Um, and they'll just come up with a list of thousands of deficiencies that have to be fixed. And that will take years to fix if they even do it. 
So, so, right. here, so, so you have the biggest line item in our government um, is uh, we don't know what they're doing with the money. All right, you got to help me out here because I, I, I'm not I'm not uh, totally clear about the process of an audit. When they go through, they're saying there's so many deficiencies that they can't even begin to actually do the audit itself. They've basically tried to do a preliminary audit, and there's not even the tools to assess um, what how much money is flowing where. Is that basically yeah, me, what it let is? Let me give you an example from the private sector. If General Motors had an audit, or uh, or Ford, or or Apple, or something had an audit, um, as they are required to do every year, and the auditor found something wrong in some part of their budget, and had to issue a uh, a letter of um, you know, uh, criticizing something in the audit and said, we can't pass this audit because of, you know, this particular category of the budget and this particular uh, um, line item. Um, That would be a disaster for that company. Its stock would plummet, um, depending on the, on the significance of the, problem that was uh, that was mentioned in the what's called an, a, a letter a comment letter in the audit uh it could bankrupt the company you know drive its drive its uh, debt into junk or any kind of thing like that but there would be a a, uh, a financial statement uh you know a collection of financial statements on that company and you'd be able to look at all the numbers except for the you know and you'd even see the ones that were being questioned by the auditor they can't do that with the pentagon because everything is screwed up because the the no, so many of the numbers in the pentagon's financial statements are made up Okay, um, I want to just put a pin in that because uh, I want to talk about these made-up numbers. But just to be clear, that the Pentagon um, is not even uh, organized enough in terms of its books, essentially, to be as bad as um, a company that would plummet in stock value. In other words, like if they got better... They would be um, a company that was going to essentially have all their uh, debt turned to junk and everybody would stop lending them money because they can't be trusted to organize their money. And that's if the Pentagon got better. Yeah, they're like Enron on uh, steroids, basically. All right. Well, listen, we're going to take a break here in in, in just a moment. But um, so... uh, what, what and, and they have not been audited. So, what is your sense? And we can we can tease this out afterwards. But what is your sense? Is this by design, or is this just by an organization that is so large that it's impossible to organize as it is? Um, it's it's not impossible, and that's the argument they try to use. We're so big, you know, we can't do it. Um, we have legacy systems that don't talk to each other, so we can't do it. But they've been saying that for um, almost three decades. And, you know, you can't say legacy systems are the problem when – your legacy. You were saying that back when you know we were using Capro computers, and they've you know, they've had plenty of time. They have so much money. They have had plenty of time to upgrade to the latest equipment. You know they could have Watson doing it, but right. they don't want to. It's uh, I've been told on the record by several people, including Jack Armstrong, who was the for five years the. Uh, supervising auditor for the internal auditor of the Pentagon, the Office of Inspector General, that uh, they could fix it if they want to, but they clearly don't want to fix it. All right. Well, we've got to take a break. Uh, When we come back, let's start talking about hidden monies and what we do know about uh, the way that the Pentagon is spending or hiding uh, monies. We got to take a quick break. We'll be right back with David Lindorf. We're talking about the Pentagon's massive accounting fraud that has now been at least exposed to the extent that one can expose it. We got to take a quick break. We'll be right back. <laughs> 